Lake sturgeon is uh, a fairly complicated fish. It's been known as uh, a living fossil. It uh, has basically remained unchanged in its structure for over 90 million years. The sturgeon in Lake Champlain is a lake sturgeon, so it spends its entire life in fresh water. And it goes by a fancy name of Podomodromus, meaning that it spends its adult life in fresh water in the lake, and then its juvenile life in rivers. Lake sturgeon are our largest fish uh, that occur in Lake Champlain at almost eight feet long. Uh, the record lake sturgeon achieve ages of up to 150 years. And they're survivors. They've been around for millions of years longer than these, these newcomers like perch and lake trout and salmon, which are fairly recent fishes. Being long lived, they don't mature until a later age. They don't begin spawning until anywhere between 10 and 20 years old. They spawn, they put their eggs onto the bottom of the river. The eggs will hatch in about five to 10 days, and then the little ones will live in the river for a couple of months until they work their way out of the river, swim down, eventually enter the lake and live the rest of their lives in the lake. But this ancient fish is just barely holding on. The lake sturgeon has been an endangered species in Vermont since 1987. Their eggs were valued as caviar, and overfishing in the 1950s and early 1960s decimated much of the population in Lake Champlain. Habitat destruction also played a role as rivers were dammed, effectively blocking the sturgeon's upstream migration to its spawning grounds. Lake sturgeon are perhaps a symbol, a very visible symbol, of our rare fishes and uh, a part of our are uh, species that appear to be fairly sensitive to human activities. With any species on the brink, a recovery plan is needed. But recovery is difficult to measure with an animal like the sturgeon. In something that lies the size of Lake Champlain, you've got a lake that goes to 400 feet deep, and it's 12 miles wide, and it's full of water. And sturgeon can go virtually anywhere in that system. So we never really, in fisheries, or very, very rarely, try and actually say we've got this number of fish. Rather, what we do is we say we have less now than we used to, we have more now than we used to. So sturgeon numbers have probably been going, down, uh, uh, going downhill. The numbers have been declining for at least three to four decades. The other problem is with something like a lake sturgeon is because they're so long lived, to see an effect or to see what sturgeon do, if there's plentiful numbers of them, it's going to take another 30 or 40 or 50 years until the numbers build back up again. What this means is that any restoration effort to bring them back to um, levels that would take them off the endangered species list will necessarily take a long time. The main way of helping sturgeon is to protect them, no longer allow human harvest, and that's relatively easy to do. You just put a rule out there and says, no fishing for sturgeon. That doesn't help them in the spawning streams. In the spawning streams, we've still got the problem in some locations of dams that get in their way, and this problem of habitat degradation. The spawning substrate is not as clean as it used to be. And that makes reproduction a challenge for sturgeon. Spawning habitats may be blocked by dams or smothered by silt that's run off the land. They uh, spawn in areas like this behind us, but it requires fast flowing water over rocks, mostly cobble to gravel sized rocks. And they have to be fairly silt and sand free. They have to be clean. The dam behind me, unfortunately, presented uh, an artificial barrier to uh, Atlantic salmon, um, walleye, as well as lake sturgeon to areas upstream, that had probably a significant impact on its ability to reproduce. They may not even reproduce every year. If they don't feel like it, they won't do it that year. They won't necessarily come up river in order to spawn. And they can live for 75 or more years. So this is a very, very slow restoration process. Protecting the biodiversity of Lake Champlain will ensure the sustainability of all its inhabitants. To take it off the endangered species list, we would have to see numbers coming back in most or all of the rivers in which it now appears. There's two ways of looking at it. 
first there's the question of the ripple effect. Do we know what role sturgeon had in the whole ecosystem and how losing that role will change everything else? Somewhere out there, they influence parts of the ecosystem that now there's a gap. If we lose too many, what's the point at which we have to go beyond the point of no return? And the lake is now so different. Right, well, when you, when you take any um, organism out of the system, uh, there's always an impact on that system if the organism uh, had been fairly abundant. And apparently from historical accounts, the lake sturgeon was pretty abundant. Any single species has a role in the ecosystem. So what it eats would no longer be eaten, so it might go out of control. What eats it now lo no longer has a food, so that species would suffer. Everything's interconnected. How many can we afford to lose before the whole system starts to break down as a functional system? Given all of this, on top of all the impacts uh, from land use, from chemicals, uh, from deposition, uh, air deposition, of mercury and PCBs, uh, you take this whole thing and the loss of a species becomes less obvious. And that's, that's unfortunate, that's, that's too bad. At what point do we say, no, that's too many, we've got to stop letting things go extinct or disappear in, in terms of functional ecology? Now that you've heard the lake sturgeon story, what do you think you can do?